Hi, Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs here, and I'm going to be painting this dresser. Um, I don't have an idea at all what I'm gonna do. And that is one of the things that, the fear factor is what holds people back from trying to paint a piece. You sit there and you're like, I'm gonna tackle that someday, I'm gonna paint it. And I do that with all my pieces. I just, I drag my feet to get started because I'm not sure what color that I wanna start with. Well, I just made some pumpkins and did them with flannel, so I'm really into the, the fall colors right now. And so I went through my little stash of spoons, these are all Dixie Belle colors, and tried to pick all the colors that were fall feeling. And I'm gonna experiment. And that is what you need to do, It's just paint. You know, um, get some colors on here, and you may end up going that direction, or you may not end up going in that direction, but at least get started. Then your creativity will kind of lead you in whatever direction you're gonna go as far as with your piece. But don't drag your feet any longer. Don't sit there and stare at that piece wondering what am I gonna do with it. Don't sit there on Pinterest for days upon days upon days trying to look for that just that right look that you're looking for and then worry about how am I gonna get that look. Just get the paintbrush on your piece and get started. If you don't like it, it's just paint. It's easy, this, this paint is easy to paint over this paint is easy to paint over other colors. So just get your brush onto the piece and get started and let that creativity flow. So I have all these little paint samples and I went through my little stash and I'm saying I don't have a little stash, I have a big stash. And Dixie Belle has a lot of colors to choose from. So I went through all the colors and one, I had to see which colors I had on hand. And two, what colors kind of went together. And coffee bean is one of my favorites. So I want to use coffee bean. Another color that I use all the time, where is it? The one color I use all the time is dried sage. Love this color. So those are two colors I knew I wanted to use because I love those two. And one of the other uh, Dixie Belle ambassadors got me excited about the terra color terracotta, so I've been using that quite often now, so I had to incorporate terracotta. And then collard greens is one of my favorites. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use collard greens or if I'm gonna use palmetto. We're gonna see how I end up going with this piece, but I'm, gonna, I'm picking a lot, of, I picked out all the fall colors. Um, I have colonial mustard, which is a nice mustardy yellow. And these are all maybes. They all kind of fall in the same, that same category. It's sandbar, Spanish moss, and I was thinking about mixing collard greens with the palmetto and making the palmetto a little richer. But like I said, I, I don't know which direction I'm going with this. I'm just gonna start blending and just getting colors all over this and turning this into a fall piece. If I don't like it, then I will paint over it. That's how easy it is to paint with the Dixie Belle paints. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna kind of show you the blending ideas and just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do the entire piece. I will show you pictures at the end. Um, and if I do anything in between, I will jump in and tell you. But I'm going to show you, there's quite a glare in here. I'm sorry, it's the lights in here. But, um, but it's in great condition. I'm not going to sand it. I've cleaned it with Dixie Bell's White Lightning, rinsed off with a clean rag after I was done cleaning, rinsed it off with a clean, oh, damp wet rag with water and I'm ready to go. I don't have to do any sanding. Okay, so let's get started. I gotta decide if I'm gonna do light to dark or dark to light. I'm gonna do like an ombre of all these beautiful fall colors. So I think that I am going to start with terracotta. Let's start with terracotta. Like I said, I have no plan. I'm playing. But when you get your paintbrush on your piece, the plan will turn into a vision once you start it, I promise. Okay, I'm not gonna dampen my surface, I'm just gonna dampen my brush just a little bit. Just a little bit. On my first coat, at least. And right now, I just wanna get the colors on the piece. Just get that first coat on. For those of you thinking, she's not taking the drawers out. I will, after the fact, pull the drawers out and clean up my edges, but for doing blending, I want it to be a nice transition between colors. I don't want to take the drawers out. I, I want to be able to have it as part of the transition. So I will, after I paint, pull the drawers up, 
clean clean up the edges and get the underneath you know where the the drawer overlaps so don't worry i will go back and touch it up normally i would paint my drawers separate but when i'm doing a blending then i will leave them in just put it on nice and thin first coat is what we call a, a, a chrome coat you're just getting paint on there because this will save you paint by doing this. I'm just getting the paint on there, so and then it'll dry, and it gives a nice, uh, like porous or um, dry texture for the next coat to adhere smooth and be able to, you know, mist it and, and not have any brush strokes. So the first coat I do what's called the crumb coat, and that is just a light coat, just to get some paint on the surface. And I'm hardly using any paint. When you see me dipping, look at, see, I mean, there's just a couple dots of paint on there. So every time I dip, I'm barely putting any paint on my brush. So this little eight ounce container, this thing will, I could paint this whole dresser with this container. I mean, that's how, I mean, I'm barely using any paint. Door. There we go. Okay, and that's my crumb coat. That's the first coat. Now I'm gonna switch to another color. What color should I do next? I told you there's no plan, just having fun, and that's what you gotta do. Okay, I'm gonna use the same brush. After I get all my first coats on, then I'll go and I'll wash my brush. And that's all the paint I'm going to need to do the whole next area. That's probably even too much. That's too much paint. I'll have paint left over. Okay. Ooh, I like the yellow with the, with the uh, terracotta. I'm not washing my brush in between because I'm going to be blending these later on on our second coat. Got to get that top ridge of the drawer. Okay, so I have the terracotta, the yellow, and I have so much of the yellow left over, so I'm gonna try to save that. Get another bowl, and let's do, I love palmetto. I'm gonna try palmetto. And if something's too dark, if something's too dark, then you lighten it up with a lighter color or use a darker color. Okay, and so instead of changing my brush, I'm just gonna, Get all the paint off of this brush. I do have a lot more paint on this one. Okay, so I just worked off my excess and my green. I'm gonna do the palmetto now. Palmetto is such a pretty color. I love it with Bunker Hill Blue. I love Palmetto and Bunker Hill Blue together. They're gorgeous colors together. I was almost contemplating doing more of the Rustic Red with the Bunker Hill Blue, but I just did a piece with that, so I didn't want to repeat myself, even though I love those colors together. But I did that for one of the live takeovers that we did on one of the Facebook groups. So let me get this down so you can see these colors together. There we go. And I, like I said, I even have paint left there. You would use very little paint. Okay. Dry this off the colors. I'm using the same paintbrush for this whole process. Next, I think I better do a lighter color. Let's try dried sage now. I'm gonna bring you down. Okay. All 
Okay, now, once again, just rub the paint off my brush. I've used this for every color so far. Just take a paper towel. Just rub the majority of the color off. Grab another bowl, and now I'm gonna use coffee bean. Okay, that little drop right there. Okay, is it, look at that color, I love it. Truly is the color of a coffee bean. It's a little bit lighter because I had the leftover of this color on my brush still a little bit. Normally it'd be darker. See, isn't that a beautiful color? Now, I know it looks funny, we're changing colors, but we're gonna blend in between um, and make it look more natural, not so abrupt. So you can kind of see where we're going with this, but I'll let this, see this is almost, this is almost dry to the touch already. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this brush real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so the crumb coat has dried all the way down. I'm gonna put one more coat on each section before I start blending, just so that I have solid, you know, full coverage, so that when I'm blending, I don't, have to, I don't have to worry about my coverage, I can just be blending. So I'm gonna put one more coat over this crumb coat. And when I say crumb coat, this is what I'm talking about. I put the paint on extremely thin. You saw I barely dipped my brush in there. And it leaves a nice, let's see, it leaves a nice dry, you know, texture for my paint to have just, you know, perfect adhesion. So. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this whole process. Just put another coat on just so I have a solid coverage and then we'll start blending. Okay, I'm back. Everything's dried. Got two coats on of each one of the colors and now, I forgot to tell you, before I let this dry, see I opened each drawer slightly so that um, while it was drying, the drawers didn't dry shut because I don't want the drawers to stick shut. And so I did open all the drawers last night. Um, and you saw while I was painting that I was putting my brush inside here to get that lip. So that would have dried shut if I would have pushed the drawers in and left it overnight. So I opened every drawer before I went in last night. So I did do that, so I got to push them back in. Okay. Now, I have a separate paintbrush for every color. Now you'll see me, I, I have, a, I have a lot, of, a lot of Klingon S50s and then I'll be using Dixie Bell's um, Oval Medium and their large flat. Uh, and then a few other brushes that I have here randomly. So I am using a separate brush for each color. So you will need to know that, a separate brush for each color. When I did this originally, I used the same brush and just wiped it dry. Don't want to do that with this. You want a separate brush for each color. You can use a chip brush if you want to, but I just, these are my brushes of choice. So. Okay, and I have my water. I have my spritzer bottle. Okay, we wanna work with wet paint, so I'm gonna be spritzing it first. First color I'm working with is terracotta and yellow. So I wanna make sure I have, though I, I wanna make sure I have those ready. So the first thing you wanna do is get a, a wet coat of paint on each one of these areas. So just, we're gonna go ahead and put it on. Make, my, make sure my brush is damp and I'm missing my surface. Okay, now when it comes to the blending, you're gonna to wanna to start from top to bottom uh, because then if you have any runs or drips, then we can fix it as we go. We don't want to end up starting from the bottom and working our way up and have something drip on something we've already finished. So start at the top and work your way down. So I've missed my surface and I've talked, so now, okay. And I'm gonna put my paint on because you're gonna want your paint wet while we do this. I think I just got it on my face just now. Okay. Now I'm gonna miss my surface again because I want it to be nice and smooth. The trick to having a smooth surface is you're using a misting bottle. 
okay? Now I quickly want to go on to the yellow. I'm not going to worry about getting down to this green yet because I'll we'll do that next. And I forgot to get my edge there. So I got a fresh coat of paint on here, nice and wet. Now we're going to start to blend. You can pick whatever brush you're going to use. I'm going to use the terracotta brush uh, for now because I'll be using the yellow one again down here. So I'm going to use the terracotta brush and we're going to bring the colors together. Okay, so you might need to mist a little bit more. Just take your brush and see, see how, let me zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to mist this again because it's getting a little dry. And actually it wasn't getting too dry. Okay, so then we just take our brush and we're just gonna drag it down onto the wet yellow. So we get a little bit of that terracotta, see the terracotta right there, is blending down onto the yellow. Take it down about halfway. And you're only seeing subtle streaks of the, the terracotta. And then I'm gonna do a little, bring the yellow up. So get the yellow in with the terracotta. So you're just bringing the colors down. You can see that the terracotta bled a little bit down into the yellow and that's what I want. But I might want a little bit more. So I'll dip a little bit more in my terracotta and get I'm gonna have that terracotta coming in from one side, maybe. I have no plan, remember, just having fun. Okay. There. So I got a little bit, see the terracotta coming in at an angle. Just, you can do whatever you think feels right. I kind of like having a little bit of the terracotta coming in from one edge. And maybe I'll do a little bit. Let's see. I kind of like that sun. I think I'm going to do a little bit of the terracotta coming in from both angles. So it has kind of like a sun effect in the center. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, work my way down. I start high and work my way down so I have less and less terracotta on my brush. See how subtle that is? See that right there? So I have a little arch of yellow in the middle. Kind of looks like a sunset. Kind of like a fall harvest sunset. See how that terracotta? Did a little half circle there. Okay, I think I know where I'm going with this now. I think I'm gonna do what they call the sunset dressers. Wasn't sure if I was gonna do the ombre look. No, I think I'm gonna do the sunset look. And I'm gonna just slightly drag my brush across there. So now you can see where I'm going with this. Okay, now. I'm gonna start blending now the yellow to the green. Leaving my terracotta brush here, leaving my yellow brush available in case I need them, but I'm gonna move down to the yellow and the green. Okay, once again, I have my yellow brush and I have my green brush. Pour some paint out. Okay, mist my surface. Just the yellow and the green is all I'm missing. Okay, I'm gonna get my yellow wet. And I'm gonna turn around and I'm going to get my green, a fresh coat of green on here. 
trying not, trying not to go too much up into the yellow just yet. And I got a drip of yellow. And there we go. Had a drip from yesterday, a dried. Okay, get my, don't forget my edges. Okay, so I got the, the green wet and the yellow wet. Now it's time to blend. Okay, I'm going to blend, I'm gonna blend the yellow down into the green. Okay, let's see. There we go. See how it's, it lightened up the green a little bit? Forget to get along the edges. And if I get too much yellow, then I'll just go back with the green and keep spritzing. Okay, let's put some green in here. See, just keep on adding the green until I get the color that I want. Blending it up into the yellow. And I love getting along the edge, pulling it in from the edge. There we go. Pulling in from the edge. Kind of gives you some funky streaks. Um, I'm gonna bring the yellow down. I kind of like that, the circular yellow up there. So I'm gonna do the same down here. So I'm gonna add some yellow to that center. In the center here, some more. And then I'm gonna, see I'm blending it down. Start high, I'm dipping in yellow, starting high up in the yellow and bringing it down into the green. So, see how I did that? So, but my brush is getting dry, or my surface is getting dry, so I wanna miss it just a little bit to reactivate it. And I'm gonna just, Start working my way down into the green. Okay, that's my yellow brush. Now I'm taking my green brush and cleaning it up. Pulling from the edges so I can get a Pulling from the edges. See? You're just wiping. I had yellow there. I brought the yellow down. I had a wet green. Brought the green up and they met in the middle. And you just keep blending them out. I'm trying to get a kind of like a sunset look. So I have that circle of yellow in the middle kind of representing the sun. Terracotta away. And let's work on the green. And that's dried sage actually, not beige. It's dried sage. Okay, get those colors available. Squirt them out. Okay, I got my green. It's got some yellow on it, so I'm gonna rub it off on a paper towel. Okay. I'm gonna zoom you in on this one so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so you're gonna be able to see the, the green and the beige a little bit better, but see that nice tone right there, the yellow and the, the green? So let's do the green and the beige, okay. Green. Oops, I forgot to spritz. And I gotta spritz down so I don't get splatters up there again. Okay. Okay, green. Okay, the green's wet. Make sure you get the edges. Now I'm gonna do the beige. My brush is dry, so I have to get that wet. You're always working with a damp brush. Damp brushes will reduce your brush strokes. So you don't want them really wet, you just want them damp. And then you're working with a damp surface. Okay.
edges. Okay, now we're gonna work our way up into the green. I'm kind of dry. I'll get more water after this. My water bottle's empty. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna use my green brush first and I'm going to work my way down. So I got green on my brush. A little spritz. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna work my way down onto the beige to blend those two together. Just getting rid of that harsh line. Coming in from the edges. So you see I blurred out the edges, so there's no harsh line between the colors. That's all blending is, is you get wet and pull the colors together. But I wanna show you, oopsie. Okay, you wanna pull in from the edges so you get your whispers. You can kind of see that color right there. Pulling it in from the edges. Okay, now I can mist again. Okay, now I'm gonna mist my my sage sage, dried sage up into my green. And blending it out. See how it's blending out? Getting rid of that line. And maybe I might want to have some more green coming in from the sides. Where's my green brush? There it is. I, maybe I want to have some more green coming in from the sides. So I will add more green. There is no right or wrong when it comes to blending. As long as you're using water and our misting bottle and in a water so that your paint is staying active and you don't get any pull marks or drag marks is what you call them. Okay, let me get more green. I'm gonna pull it in from the side. That's kind of different. Kind of hard, line's kind of hard right there. There we go. So kind of doing something a little bit different with the green there. Okay, so now I'm gonna be doing the coffee bean, which I ran out of, so I had to open another container. Coffee bean and the dried sage, we'll be blending those. Okay, hopefully you can see that. See how pretty these two colors are blending together. Just, we want to get rid of any harsh lines. Everything needs to be blurred. That's the idea of blending. Come in from the sides. And, and just blending out the line. It's kind of fun. And I think, you know what, I wanna draw a little bit of color down here. And I'm thinking terracotta. Since I started with terracotta, I think I'm gonna end with terracotta. I think I need a little terracotta right here in the center. Just in the center here. Can you see what I'm doing right there? Just adding a little terracotta. And it doesn't look like terracotta, but let me get some more chocolate on here. I don't like the I don't like the terracotta out to the edges too far. Okay, I'm gonna take a dry brush, and I'm just going to soften that edge. See how that dry brush just kind of really softened.
Okay, so this is what we got going on so far. So I blended, I put a little bit of terracotta just at the bottom, just for a little peekaboo. There goes the coffee bean to the dried sage, up into the green, to the yellow, and blended out the terracotta. Okay, so having fun with color and blending is really easy. And so you don't have to have that fear of, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do with this piece? Pick out the colors that you like, put them on, let them dry, and then come back at it with some wet paint, your spray bottle, and blend them together and see what you get. If you don't like what you have, you spray it down with more water, add more paint, and keep playing with it. So just having fun with it, playing with it. Just The, the toughest thing is, it's just getting started. Once you get started and make that commitment that you're gonna paint this piece, that's, that's all there's to it. So I am going to, like I said, I'm going to finish it up. I will put a finished picture at the end of this video um, after I've done everything. And then there will be a part two, which will be the gilding waxes, the dark wax, and the clear wax is what I believe I'm gonna be doing. Um, but there will be a part two to finishing this, but I will put how this piece is gonna look finished at the end of this video so that you don't have to wait till part two to see how it turns out. Um, but uh, yes. This was fun and it's all fall colors. And if I don't like it, then I can just turn around and paint right over it. It is that easy. So don't be scared to take on a piece. Uh, don't sit there and ponder forever over what color you want to use and what look you want to get. Just get the paintbrush and, the, and paint on the canvas. This is your canvas. And then it will decide for you as you work. It, I mean, the. The hardest part out about it is just getting that brush on to the piece for that first stroke. Once you get started, I promise, it, it gets easier from there. Okay, well this is Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs. Until next time, which will be part two of this video, I hope you have a great day.